The next step is then we're going to go back, loop back up, and choose another uh, non-integer valued variable on some node. Um, so here, this is the only remaining node. We're going to choose x4 uh, and then repeat this process. So we create two subproblems. Uh, the first subproblem maintains the constraint uh, on this node, right? Our node constraint uh, up here is that uh, x1 has to be less than or equal to 8. But we're not requiring that it's equal to 8. Uh, now we just maintain this constraint that it's less than or equal to 8. And we introduce a new constraint that it's either greater than or equal to 4 or less than or equal to 3. So we're kind of bounding on either side of this x4 variable. And then we're going to need to solve that. So we'll choose uh, these, I guess, in order and then solve them. Um, and we end up with solutions of 11.93 and 11.91. And both of these are feasible solutions. So we need to review our fathoming criteria. And we note uh, either neither of these can be fathomed. They both have feasible solutions. Um, they all have values that aren't integer as part of the variables in the solution. And so we just have to continue on. So we just pick any unfathomed node. And I guess we'll move forward picking node 5. Um, and then we create two subproblems. Now we have, uh, we're going to choose the x3 variable to bound. Uh, and we do that by, again, maintaining constraints that we've already introduced, um, but adding this additional constraint on x3. So we move forward solving these problems. Uh, and we see on node 6, we have a value of 10.8. In node 7, we have 11.72. And neither of these involve entirely integer values. Um, and they're both feasible. And so we can't, we can't fathom either of these branches. We have to continue on. Let's first move forward with node 7, again repeating the process. Let's pick x2, introducing our constraints, solving the problem. And we get a result that. Um, this combination here uh, for node 8 gives us 11.61. And for 9, we get a solution of 10.46. Um, now, there's something special about this node here in that the solution involves entirely integer variables. Um, so we've actually just, for the first time, been able to identify our incumbent solution. Right? This now qualifies as our first incumbent uh, feasible integer solution. Uh, and so we can go ahead and update that solution and as a part of our, our metrics up here. So 11.61 is the first candidate. Once we do this, we also need to go back and look at any other branches uh, where the, uh, uh, so any other unfathomed uh, branches or nodes where the solution is worse than 11.61. And if we do that, we'll see node six is worse and node nine is worse. So there is no possible way that with these branches and the constraints that have been introduced, that the solutions that are, are below this, which would necessarily be worse than these solutions, um, could do better than our incumbent. And so we just don't even bother exploring those branches anymore. All right, so we now have an incumbent solution. We've calculated uh, the gap, which is the relative difference between these two things. For many problems, you might find that a gap a tolerance of, say, 0.01 or 0.001 is going to be good enough. Um, so we're not that far off from, from the uh, kind of gap criteria that we normally use, but let's just continue this example out for the sake of completing it. So we go back up to node 4, and we again select a variable, uh, a non-integer variable, and we uh, introduce a constraint. Now we have to make sure we're being careful about um, the, the right constraints following the branch. All right, so in this branch, we had less than or equal to 8 from up here. We have greater than or equal to 4 uh, in both cases. And we're adding this extra constraint uh, for these two subproblems related to x3. Okay, Solve that problem. We see that uh, node 10 is infeasible. Node 11 has a solution. Uh, but we're kind of now reintroducing some uh, non-integer variables, which is fine. It still satisfies the solution. And we note that our new uh, best upper bound, right, this is for a relaxed problem, is 11.74. And so we have to update that and update the gap, the gap calculation. OK, so the remaining uh, unfathomed node is 11. And we'll go forward with that one. Our subproblem now has constraints on every variable. And we solve uh, each of these subproblems. And we find 
Node 12 is infeasible. Node 13 has a solution, but again has one variable that is not integer. So we can update with this, again, our upper bound, but we don't, or we are not yet able to decide whether or not this problem has been solved. So we'll shift things up a little bit so give ourselves a little bit more room and continue on with the, the last step here, which is let's introduce two subproblems on this. Uh, okay, we have our, our constraints. The one thing to point out is on node 16, now we have a constraint that says we have to be both less than or equal to and greater than or equal to 4. So actually this is just a plain equality constraint. Um, so we can solve this in both of these cases and we find 15 is infeasible and 16 has an object objective value of 11.4. So now this is finally a integer solution uh, and we can look back and decide whether we want to update our incumbent. So here's our new solution, 11.4. We have to compare that to our current incumbent. We're maximizing. So 11.4 is worse than 11.61. Uh, so we don't, in fact, update our incumbent. We leave our incumbent as the current best solution. But we've now explored everything, and the best solution that we found of all the, all the possible solutions uh, is 11.61, right? This is the best. The upper bound is now uh, on all the nodes that, are, uh, that, sort of a, that have not been fully explored. That's the best that, that remains. Right, so we've just decided that our, uh, that our incumbent solution and our upper bound are the same. The gap has converged to zero. We've found the optimal solution, um, and we can terminate the problem. So this example goes through in detail how you go, how you go about um, exercising the branch and bound algorithm. Uh, we talk through the step-by-step -step process. In reality, in, in many applications, this process is automated by the solver and has a lot of heuristics and methods for reducing computation, for choosing the right variables. So the next thing we we're going to do uh, in the next video is go through uh, how to implement an integer problem in uh, Pyomo and solve it there.